Okay, so this is the barrel that I've got for the biodigester project. Um, I got it out of a skip um, because I wanted it to be free. Um, and as a result of that, it does have a couple of issues, which you can see here, namely that it has a couple of holes in it. I'll explain in a second why having holes in it is a problem. Um, but there's one big gouge there, which looks like, if we have a look here, it looks like it's been caused by somebody throwing something in there. I think it's been used as a kind of a bin at one point. Um, and there's also this big hole here. I think that this um, barrel might also have been used as a rainwater butt at some point and somebody's put a hole in the bottom to put a, a tap in there. Um, so this is a problem because um, this is how the biodigester system works. First of all, you have three barrels. This is the first barrel. Um, this is sealed at the top. And it has water up to about there. It has a pipe that goes down into here, which is the feed pipe, um, which you put um, waste food into um, down there. And that's what get di gets digested up and produces methane. There's another pipe here which allows out any excess water and slurry and stuff like that, which you can put on your garden, and it gets into that pipe through a, a hole there. And then uh, there's also a nozzle at the top of this barrel here, which I'll come back to in a second. There's a second barrel, um, which has an open top, uh, which also has water in up to about this level. And then there's a third barrel, and that's the barrel we're looking at here, that also has an open top. It's slightly smaller. And what we do with that barrel is we turn it upside down and we stick it into the second barrel and we use this to collect the gas. It goes up and down as it fills and empties with gas. The gas gets in there through another nozzle here, which comes from our digester. And then there's another pipe that goes off this one, which goes to whatever you like, a, a barbecue or a cooking stove or something like that. Um, and what you do is uh, that's where you burn your gas and you can use that to heat up food or boil water or whatever you want to do with it. Um, and there's a problem with that because that second barrel has to be airtight so that it can collect our gas in it. So obviously having two holes in it isn't ideal. So what I needed to do first was uh, make a, a sort of bung to go in that um, big hole at the bottom. Um, those barrels are made out of HDP plastic and the other thing which is made out of HDP plastic which is high density polyethylene is um, milk bottles uh, the standard ones you get in the supermarket so I made this bung out of milk bottle lids it's about five or six milk bottle lids because they seem like the most substantial part and also they they were already sort of a similar shape anyway and they melted quite nicely together so I'm just using a heat gun here to kind of shape it generally into the right shape that I want to be and then we'll prep that hole that we're going to put it in and then we'll um, sort of use that to try and make that uh, surface airtight. By the way, if you're looking for HDPE um, amongst the sort of plastic waste in your house, the thing that you need to look for is this number two um, recycling symbol. Um, all different plastics have different numbers, but a number two means that it's the same stuff that these barrels are made of. So once I had it sort of in a uh, in roughly the right shape. It hardens really quickly. I then used a Dremel just to kind of round off those not perfect edges and get it so that it would uh, fit nicely into the right spot. I also had to prep the edges of the holes in the barrel. I just wanted to bevel them ever so slightly, make sure they were clean and didn't have too much dirt on them so that that extra plastic from the milk bottle tops would melt in there properly. Then um, I heated up the bung that I was going to use and I also heated up the outer surface that I was going to put that bung into so that they would first of all that it would go in there quite nicely and also so that it would start to fuse those two different plastics because you don't just want one piece of plastic sitting inside the other piece of plastic you want those two plastics to weld together for this process so there we go I just put it in there I'm using gloves here because when that hot plastic sticks to your finger it can be extremely painful as you can see it went in there quite nicely and it sits quite proud, which is good because we need that excess plastic there to, to kind of smooth out, to fill those gaps. So after that, I had to heat up both sides of the plastic um, to the point where it was kind of gloopy, where it was becoming a liquid so that we could spread it out to seal that surface. I accidentally didn't record a little bit of the top here um, when I was um, doing this process, but I had to go back again and remelt this plastic anyway because um, I wanted to put on additional layers to make sure it was really um, air and water tight. So you can see here, this is me heating it up. Um, let me show you this first stage. It goes to where it gets kind of slightly tacky and slightly runny. 
and then after that it gets to the point where you can pretty much just spread it around like butter um this isn't a very neat job but i can go over it with a sander afterwards as you can see later i did add additional bits of plastic to it so anyway once i had this one to the point where i thought it was quite nice um i was left with something like this although as you'll see later this isn't exactly how it turned out then i went on to this gouge which is um a problem I use the heat gun again to get it to lay down flat in the first instance and then what I did was I took layers of milk carton and I went over that and I melted them on top unfortunately I didn't film that process um, but as you can see here this is what we ended up with again this still needs sanding back but that is completely watertight as you can see there's no water dripping out of that and I did fill it much higher than that as well and just to make sure that it was still watertight under pressure um, and I left it for 24 hours after that and it was still maintaining that water inside. This is the other um, hole where we replaced that um, sort of tap hole that was in there and I just dried it off now to show you there was some water dripping around from when I put the hose in but just to show you that there was no water coming through um, from that hole and again same thing uh, it's been there full of water for 24 hours and no water's come out. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that that's going to be uh, nicely air and watertight. I'm happy with that as a fix and I'll get back to you with uh, the rest of the project.